So we come to the final part of the AQA energetics topic, and that is um, bond enthalpies. And that title might ring a bell. Um, at GCSC, you looked at something called bond energies when you did uh, the energy transfer topic. And in terms of what's the difference, well, the answer is not a lot. So the questions you might look at um, sometimes might be a little bit more complicated than you've previously been used to, but essentially there's not much more to it. So you did to refer to them as bond energies. We're now referring them to them as bond enthalpies. That's what, what we call them at A level. Um, and you are typically given information um, in terms of mean bond enthalpies. And so we just have to understand what exactly is meant by mean bond enthalpies. So the mean bond enthalpy is the average energy needed to break one mole of a bond to give separated atoms everything being in their gas state. Now we'll come back to that word mean um, shortly. I mean, you can see it says average energy, but we'll understand a little bit better about why we're talking about the average energy uh, in a couple of slides. So here are some examples. Um, so we've got uh, the mean bond enthalpy. Um, notice again, just like all of the other enthalpies we've been doing, uh, the units are kilojoules per mole. And you saw in the definition, it was one mole of a bond. Um, so essentially one way of looking at this uh, is that the uh, higher the or greater the mean bond enthalpy, uh, the stronger the bond. So you can see, uh, for example, that um, uh, the carbon-carbon double bond, um, 612, is uh, much um, greater, it's a much greater value than the carbon-carbon single bond, it's a much stronger bond, uh, which would make sense if you think about it, if you've got um, a double bond as opposed to a single bond. And if we look at the carbon-oxygen bond, the carbonyl bond, uh, that has also a very high value. So why is it called mean bond enthalpy then? Well, the strength of a bond is affected by the environment it's in. So the energy required to break a carbon-hydrogen bond in, say, methane in CH4 will be slightly different to that for the same type of bond in, say, uh, fluoromethane, CH3F. So the mean bond enthalpy is actually the energy required to break one mole of a specific bond averaged across a range of compounds. Now that actually can be an answer in an exam question. That can be a two mark answer. So uh, they can ask you what is meant by um, the term mean bond enthalpy. They can ask you that. That can be a two mark question. You need to talk about um, a specific bond. And in some cases, it might even give you a particular bond. So you should refer to that bond. So the energy required to break one mole of a carbon hydrogen bond averaged across a range of compounds. So the average bit it would be one mark and then across the range of compounds, across a range of compounds would be the second mark. So this is a, an important definition and one that can feature. Now, uh, not all bond enthalpies uh, you're given are an average though. Um, and so you just have to watch out for that. So how can that be? How can there be um, some bond enthalpies that won't be given as an average? Well, if we think of some concrete examples like uh, the HH bond or the CLCL bond, then these can't be averages uh, or they can't exist averages because these bonds only exist in one molecule each. The HH bond is only ever going to appear in H2 and the CLCL bond is only ever going to appear in Cl2. So there is not uh, a range of environments. There is not a, a range of compounds through which we can, uh, from which we can average this bond strength. So in most cases, we're going to have a mean bond enthalpy, but just to be aware, there are certain circumstances in which it will be the bond enthalpy and not an average. So when it comes to calculating the enthalpy change using uh, mean bond enthalpies or bond enthalpies, um, then you may already remember or be familiar with this, uh, this equation here. Um, it might be stated slightly differently than you remember. So the enthalpy change is the, and this is the uppercase um, letter sigma, so that means sum of, so in maths you might, might see that, um, it means the sum of what follows. So the sum of the bonds broken minus the sum of the bonds made. Now we can actually uh, demonstrate this um, equation um, using a, a Hess cycle. Um, if you remember the definition earlier for uh, mean bond enthalpy, uh, not so much the average energy bit, but the bit where it says uh, breaking bonds to give separated atoms everything being in the gas state. So perhaps if we just uh, draw a simple um, Hess cycle to illustrate that. So we're de trying to determine uh, the enthalpy change for this reaction. And we're talking here about bond enthalpies. So that means uh, we are breaking those bonds to give separated atoms. 
So let's imagine that we break all of the bonds and that would give us Similarly, we could work backwards from the products and imagine we um, broke um, all of those bonds because, of course, we're giving the bond enthalpies um, for those bonds that are present in the products, and that would give us this. And now it looks very much like a Hess cycle, doesn't it? And we could take uh, our alternative route uh, around. So we can't go direct from reactants to products, but what if we go via the individual atoms? And so we are going uh, with the arrow of reactants to individual atoms, so we keep the sign of the bond enthalpies that add up, and then we are going against the arrow uh, that uh, goes from products to individual atoms, so we are reversing the sign, hence the minus. So that is why this Hess cycle um, sort of demonstrates or proves, or whatever you want to call it, um, that expression that we've got that the enthalpy change is the sum of the bonds broken minus the sum of the bonds made. Right, so this question is asking us to calculate the enthalpy change for this combustion reaction between propane and oxygen. Um, they've given us the bond enthalpies. So we could simply do uh, add up all of the enthalpies of the bonds broken, all of the enthalpies of the bonds formed, do our bonds broken minus bonds formed calculation, and, and hey presto, we've got the answer. And, and that is exactly what we're going to do. But um, it is easy to make mistakes. Uh, it's easy to... Um, incorrectly count up the number of bonds or the number of each type of bond when we're doing this calculation. Now, while you're getting to grips with these calculations, uh, I think uh, the best thing for you to do is to draw out the structures and to draw out all of the structures. So uh, I'm just going to do that now. Now, I think this um, allows us to see much more clearly what it is, uh, what or how many of each bond it is that we're actually breaking. So if we just start with the carbon-carbon uh, bond, then I've got, uh, very clearly, I've got two carbon-carbon bonds. If I move on to the carbon-hydrogen bond, then I can very easily see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, then on to oxygen, oxygen. So you can see that I've, um, I've drawn out, uh, you know, I've drawn out all five molecules. But again, you know, this might not be a problem. You might have been able to just see that you have five uh, oxygen double bonds, sure. I think with something like carbon dioxide and water, I think drawing out just again helps us avoid making a mistake. Um, so uh, we've got um, our carbon oxygen double bond, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And finally, we have the oxygen hydrogen bond, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, if you're simply being asked to do the enthalpy of reaction, then uh, I think it's best for you to lay out your question um, or what, lay out your answers as follows. So I'm starting with just fo just looking at bonds broken. Um, the reason for doing this, and then the next I'll look at bonds formed, is that let's say you get the, the wrong answer at the end. Let's say your final answer is incorrect. So you're obviously going to lose that mark. But if you've, if you've clearly stated the values, the total value for bonds broken, that's likely to be a mark. If you've clearly stated the values for bonds formed, that's likely to be a mark. If it's not clear from your working out what those actual values are, then you run the risk of losing all three marks as opposed to just one or two. So write out the bonds broken first. So we've very clearly got eight uh, carbon-hydrogen bonds. We've got two carbon-carbon bonds, and we've got five oxygen-oxygen double bonds, and that equals... 6,482 kilojoules per mole. So now we look at bonds formed, and we've got six carbon um, oxygen double bonds, and we've got eight um, oxygen hydrogen bonds, which gives us a value of 8,162. So if this was a three mark question, um, so far we would have got two out of the three marks. And then to get the final mark, we do the actual calculations. So the enthalpy change equals bonds broken minus bonds formed, which equals minus 1,680 kilojoules per mole, which makes sense as an answer because we would expect uh, the combustion of propane to be uh, a very exothermic reaction. So I think the key thing here um, to help you sort of get to grips with it, um, this area early on, is wherever possible to actually draw out uh, the molecules involved um, because you'll see much more clearly the number of bonds. I mean, one difference between GCSE and A-level is that at GCSE, uh, they pretty much did draw these out for you. So they took some of the load off you, as it were, 
Um, whereas when you get it at A level, you might simply be just given the reaction um, like that, and you've got to think very carefully about the actual number of each type of bond. And I think if you draw this out, that sort of takes the load off just like it did at GCSE and just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so uh, if we wait, read what this question is asking, um, uh, it gives us some background information, but essentially it gives us the enthalpy change for uh, the reaction between hydrazine, which is N2H4, and oxygen. So it's a combustion reaction um, and it forms nitrogen and water. Uh, so this is a little different to the previous type of question and different to the type of question you would have got at GCSE. So the previous question was asking us to work out the enthalpy change, so we just had to do all of the bonds broken minus all of the bonds uh, formed. Uh, this time they're asking us to work out the nitrogen-nitrogen bond enthalpy in hydrazine, and then they give us the following enthalpies. Now, um, we're still going to do the drawing the molecules out so that we can see exactly how many of each type of bond there are, but um, in terms of the best way to approach a question like this, and again, certainly while you're getting your head around what's going on, I, th I think it's best to draw um, or create um, a Hess cycle for this question. So let's uh, let's start first of all by drawing the the molecules out with showing their respective bonds. So if we think back to the definition of mean bond enthalpy, um, it was the average energy needed to break one more of the bond to give separated atoms, separated atoms, everything being in the gas state. So what this means is when we're doing uh, bonds broken, um, then what we're really working out is or what we're producing are gaseous atoms. So uh, I'm going to create a sort of a Hess cycle, so our sort of triangle shape that we've done when we did uh, applications of Hess cycles. And naturally, if we're breaking bonds, then what we're forming are gaseous atoms. And now I'm going to draw arrows from each molecule to the gaseous atoms, because that's what I'm going to uh, put my values next to. OK, so uh, let's start with putting some values down. So I know uh, what the enthalpy change of the overall reaction is. They tell me that is minus 583. Now if I work from uh, the molecules, starting with hydrazine, um, I know I am breaking uh, four NH bonds. So that adds up to uh, um, 1,552 um, kilojoules per mole. Um, uh, and I also would have broken or would be breaking the nitrogen-nitrogen bond, but that's what I've got to find out. So I'm just going to call that, I'm going to give that an algebraic term. I'm just going to say plus y. I tend to use y, um, just so I find x sometimes personally confusing because it looks a little bit like a time sign when we're actually doing a calculation like this. Um, we've got the oxygen-oxygen double bond. It's just one of those, so that's 498. Uh, we've got nitrogen-nitrogen double bond, only one of those. So that's 944. And then finally, we have four oxygen-hydrogen bonds. So that equals 1,852. So uh, what we're trying to work out is um, what, um, the, what Y is. So the way I'm going to treat this is I'm going to make this one side of my expression. So normally how, when we had an unknown, we said that equals and then we did our alternative route. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this together and then equals and then my alternative route, which is this way around. So let me just uh, write the alternative route. So remember that Hess's law says that the uh, enthalpy change of a chemical change is independent of the route taken. So this means that 1,552 plus 498 plus y equals, and uh, so that was um, us going from here directly to the gaseous atoms, equals our alternative root round to get, because that's the enthalpy change is the same. So that equals minus 583, because we're going uh, with that arrow, uh, plus 944, because we're going with the nitrogen N2 to gaseous atoms arrow, and then plus 1852. So uh, we resolve that, we um, subtract from both sides 1,552 and 498, and we end up with uh, 163 kilojoules per mole, which makes sense uh, because um, it would be, it has to be an endothermic process. Remember, um, breaking a bond is an endothermic process. It's a single bond, so it's not, we don't expect it to, to be too high. Um, it's quite that's quite a weak bond, uh, admittedly, but anyway, um, that would probably explain why it was a fairly exothermic um, reaction. 
So here's another question asking us to actually work out the bond enthalpy um, of a bond. So for a nitrogen-hydrogen bond in ammonia, um, so the mean of bond enthalpy, um, and curiously, they haven't given us an equation. What they've done is they've given, well, they've given us the, the enthalpy change for formation of ammonia. So the first thing that we have to be able to do is write uh, the equation for formation of ammonia. So the definition of formation is that you are forming one mole of a substance and we're forming uh, ammonia. So we are forming one mole of ammonia. So we should draw our arrow. So whatever's being formed is the product and is the only product. And what we cannot do is we cannot now put any coefficients in front of that NH3 because the definition says the formation of one mole and that value of minus 46 kilojoules per mole is per mole. So what are we forming it from? Uh, so the definition says from the elements in their standard states. Um, so we have got uh, nitrogen, which is a diatomic molecule, and we have got hydrogen, which is also a diatomic molecule. And now we need to uh, balance um, the equation. So uh, we've only got one nitrogen on the right, and that is fixed. That cannot change uh, because of the definition of the equation. And so we are going to have a half in front of N2. And then in front of H2, we've got uh, two hydrogens on the left, three on the right, so we're going to have 3 over 2. So even though we're talking about bond enthalpies, and it suddenly looks like we've got half a nitrogen and one and a half hydrogens, um, just remember that those numbers, those coefficients are molar ratios. So what it's saying is we've got half a mole of nitrogen molecules and one and a half moles of hydrogen molecules. So on the previous questions, one of the things I did was that I drew the structures um, of the molecules um, and then... Um, you know, that gave me a very clear insight into the number of bonds. Um, it is perhaps a little bit more tricky here, so I'm just wondering what to do. So um, I think it does make sense to draw them, but what I'll do is I'll add the coefficients in front um, this time. So um, here goes. Okay, and then if I um, break these bonds, because I'm giving bond enthalpies, then what I'm doing is making gaseous atoms. Okay, so uh, now I'll put the values um, that I know, so that I know that the enthalpy change for the reaction, for the formation reaction, is minus 46 kilojoules per mole. I know that um, the bond enthalpy for nitrogen is 944, but I've got half a mole, so that's 944 per mole. Okay, so that equals 472. Uh, then with hydrogen, I've got one and a half moles of uh, the hydrogen hydrogen bond. So that is 3 over 2 times 436, which equals 654. And then finally, um, I've got my nitrogen-hydrogen bonds, which is what I'm trying to work out. And I'm trying to work out the average bond energy of, uh, for one of those. And I have three. So my unknown is Y, but I have three unknowns, so it's 3Y. So actually, this is, um, this is actually a little bit more straightforward than before. Um, so uh, I am trying to work out, in effect, uh, this enthalpy change so that I can work out the bond energy. Um, so I might have to take an alternative route, so I'm going to go this way round. So I'll just draw my alternative route on. So now I'm ready to do my calculation. Uh, so uh, 3y equals, and then it's the alternative route, and I'm going against the first arrow, so I'm going against the formation arrow. So I reverse the sign, so it becomes plus 46, and then I'm going with the next two arrows, the ones for the breaking of the nitrogen, nitrogen triple bond, and the hydrogen, hydrogen bond. So it's going to be plus 472, uh, plus 654. So that equals 1172, and uh, that's what 3y equals, so therefore y must equal... Uh, 1172 divided by 3, which is uh, 391 kilojoules per mole. That's the three significant figures, by the way. So uh, that concludes uh, bond enthalpies. Um, I've given three examples. Uh, I, I probably could have done some more examples, but um, it does build on what you were doing with the, the application of Hess cycle and what you did at GCSE. So if you have any questions about this topic, uh, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, thanks.